girls. Thank you so much for coming for another episode of Content for Kids. It's been a couple weeks. I've been a little busy, but I wanted to get an episode out this week for you. So we're going to do one of my favorite songs because of the message. I'm going to do that on guitar today. It's called Standing on the Promises of God. There's a Bible story about a parable, a story that Jesus told his disciples. And it was about two different people. One of them built their house upon the sand. And when the waves came, it got washed away. And one of them built their house upon a solid rock. And you know, when that wind came and the waves came, what do you think happened to the house? It stayed. It was solid, it was strong, and it weathered any storm. That's how a Christian's life is supposed to be. We have the rock, Jesus Christ, whom we have found truth in, the only truth in the whole world, no matter what professors tell you, no matter what experts in the world tell you, God said that the truth is found in Jesus Christ and he can't lie. And so we have to remember to stand upon the promises of God. And that's why we're doing this song today, Standing on the Promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of Ago, I put out a little video. Um, it was just a special episode for you guys, but I did tell the story of the blind man and I kind of talked about how his faith is what saved him because he believed in everything Jesus said. And if you didn't watch that episode, that's okay because we're actually going to be doing a little booklet about that story and we're going to call it Two Stories of Faith what we have in common with the blind man because you actually have things in common with the blind man and i talked a little bit about it on the other episode but we're going to start fresh and talk about it all right now so let's talk supplies you need something to color with a stapler a scissors and then you'll need a couple pieces of blank white paper to start off we're gonna take two pieces of paper and you're going to bend them in half this way and make a long crease. And once you've made that crease, you're gonna take the scissors and you're gonna cut up the middle on the crease. So that will become our book. So it'll look like that. And then you'll bend it over one more time that way. And now we take our stapler. I think it'll be easier to color this book if it's already um, in a book form. And you're just going to 
do your best to put a staple. You might have to kind of bend over. You might have to bend it like that so you can fit it in there. That works too, kind of like that. And then staple a couple times down the middle crease. I'm kind of doing my backwards, but that's okay. No problem. It's kind of hard to just do the best you can. And if you need someone to help you with this, that's not the problem. So that kind of gives you the staples down the crease. So you have your binding to keep it like a booklet. And on the very front, we're going to write in big, nice big letters, whatever color you want, two stories of faith. Just like that, two stories of faith. Now underneath that, you can take a different color if you'd like and write in smaller letters what we have in common with the blind man. Like that. And then in another color, write who this book is by, which is you. So I'm gonna write, I, Olivia Rose Anderson. I have some extra space, so I'm probably gonna do some decorating on that. But for now, this is our title. And we're gonna get to page one. Now, as you can see, the marker goes through the paper. So what I'm gonna have you guys do, the parts, the pages that you actually have to write something, we're gonna cut out pieces of paper, write it on there, and then paste it on so you won't have any of the marker bleeding through. I'm just gonna make some shapes here. I'll probably cut this paper up three ways like that and then cut it in half like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect size, just as long as it fits on one of the pages. And if you wanna do this by measuring, you would have taken a piece of paper, folded it in three like that, cut on the seams and cut in half. And that would have kind of given you the ones that I just cut that are not perfect, but that's okay, right? We're gonna do this one step at a time. So page one, we're gonna write on our pieces of paper. And we're gonna say a number one. We're going to say this man was born blind. What's interesting about that is he had never seen before. His eyes had never been okay. So what Jesus did was truly a miracle. So this is going to go on this side. This man was born blind. It's gonna be pasted, kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna trim my paper because I don't need all that space. So you basically can just make it fit. Oh, we also are gonna need a glue stick. I'll get that later. And then we're going to color on this side. Now my marker kind of bleeds through, so I'm gonna put some extra paper underneath there just so it doesn't leak through. And I'm gonna just draw a scene of a blind man sitting or lying down. He was always having to beg for food and money because he couldn't see, he couldn't work. So he had a very hard life. 
So I'm gonna do some brown lines for the ground. And then I'm gonna do a gray rock. Let's have him sit on a rock. Can you imagine, if you wanna know what it is to be blind for a little bit, just cover your eyes with a bandana or a mask and walk around. It's very hard and it might be kind of fun for a couple minutes, but it sure would be hard to live our life that way. I'm gonna take some green marker and do some grass. So this is my seam, just like that. And now I'm going to draw the blind man sitting sitting on the rock, holding out his hand, saying, someone please feed me. Someone please give me money, give me something. I can't work or anything. I think I'll use, I think I'll use a brown outfit. And back in those days, they kind of wore the long robes. So you can see that he is, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm definitely not the best draw drawer in the world. That's okay. And we'll just pretend he has black hair. And it's all shaggy because he hasn't, he doesn't have anyone to take care of him. He's all on his own. open like please can someone give me something to eat I don't have the best marker for skin color so he's looking a little orange but that's okay it's just to kind of remind us what it might have been like so this is this is his life a sad life he just sat there on the rock waiting for people and now you know what I'm gonna grab my glue stick real quick so we can glue this on there. And the next thing we're going to do is write the next page of our little book, number two. Jesus came and told him what to do. This man needed faith. said about faith. Faith is the only thing you can do without doing anything. You can't have faith really hard and make your body tired, right? No, it's all in your mind. It's all in your heart and your spirit. And that's the beautiful thing. God doesn't want us to try so hard that we're exhausted. He just wants us to believe. And that's what this blind man did. Jesus came and told him what to do. This man needed faith. And now we're gonna draw another scene here. So let's kind of do the same backdrop of the first one. Let's kind of copy that scene. So let's do some brown lines and a nice gray rock. remember what it looked like exactly. That's okay. And some green grass. Well, 
With this one, we're gonna draw the blind man standing upright and putting his hands out to Jesus. And we're gonna draw a picture of Jesus reaching his hands out to him. Jesus was never afraid to be close to the people who were dirty or sick. He just loved them all so unconditionally. So we'll draw this man standing upright. And we're gonna draw Jesus coming to him. It's hard to know exactly what they wore or everything, but we know they wore a lot of robes and the dust and everything. So just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to tell the story. And I'm gonna do Jesus's robes in a different color, which I don't really have a tan, but I would like to make it look different. So do whatever you need to do. So here's my little picture of both of the men, and all he needed was faith. Now we go to page three, and let's do page three. We're going to write the blind man obeyed and went his way in perfect sight. Can you imagine? He had never seen the clouds before. Or the grass. Or an animal. Or even his family. He had never seen any faces of anyone he loved before. And now Jesus opened the whole world to him. So this is going to be a different scene because he had to wash in the water. I don't know if you remember the story. Jesus put some clay on his eyes. He, he took some dust and he spit on it and he made some clay and he put him on the eyes of the blind man and said, go wash in the pool and you will be able to see. And the man did that. So he just came out of the water. So we are going to do some water like this. And then maybe we'll do some brown over here. And we are going to draw that man with his hands up rejoicing that he could see he could see for the first time in his life I love to think of that story and just how much love Jesus had for him even though he didn't know him the man had never seen Jesus before but he knew that Jesus would save him. 
and he placed his faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to make his hair not quite as sticking up because if it was all wet, it was straight, right? drops because he was so excited and filled with water and he could see the blind man obeyed and went his way in perfect sight that's what his faith did for him now we are going to talk about you and we are going to talk about what we have in common with the blind man. Well, first of all, what were we born with? We weren't born blind, or most of us weren't, but every one of us was born in sin. None of us are sinless. When you're born, you have some of Adam's original sin in you. So the moment we're born, we need a savior. So we're going to kind of copy this book and the first part of it and we're going to say we are born in sin. Good thing the story doesn't stop there, right? Because that would be very bad and depressing. This is just the beginning of a wonderful story. We are born in sin. And that's not the way the story ends, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do next is paste this. Like that. And now you can draw a picture that maybe looks like you a little bit. I'm not very good at that, but that's okay. I'm just going to draw a girl with brown hair and green eyes. And that's going to represent us. This is me. We're born in sin. Even though when we're a baby, we don't mean to do it, the fact of the matter is that when Adam and Eve sinned, every child that was born after that had sin in them and in need of a savior. So now we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna write something kind of close to this number two. Jesus came and told him what to do. This man needed faith. And we're gonna write how that affects us. So we're on number five. Because you know what's amazing? Jesus came for us too. So we're gonna say Jesus came and told us all we need is faith. Now we have a different instruction than the blind man, right? Because his he had to have faith that Jesus was really going to do what he said, and he had to go wander 
to try to find that pool because he couldn't see it. So he had to really believe that Jesus wasn't lying. He had faith in everything Jesus said. And we're the same way because we can't see it, can we? We can't see Jesus every day, but we have faith that he's real and we also have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. That's the peace and the happiness and joy that you feel when you know you're right with God and you can talk to him and you have just so much joy in knowing that God loves you and that the Holy Spirit is right in dwelling you right there to help you through your day. So we're going to talk about what we're going to color for number five. And it's important that we remember what happened on the cross. But what's even just as important is what happened three days later. If Jesus would have not risen from the grave, that means that our sins wouldn't have been paid for yet. You can think of the grave kind of like the jail cell. If someone is paying for something they did, they don't get let out of jail, do they? They have to stay in prison until they paid their sentence. Well, Jesus stayed in the grave until he paid the sentence. And when he came out of the grave, it proved to the whole world and all the angels how the price was paid and sin was no longer a problem. So we're gonna do two hills, kind of like this. isn't going to be perfect but that's okay this first one is going to represent the hill that Jesus's cross was on and the second one is going to represent the tomb that is empty so we're going to color that hole in the mountain a big black hole and you can also take gray and we're going to show that the stone was rolled away. And you can put some stuff on the mountain. You can do grass and trees. And what we're gonna do is above the cross, we're gonna write the cross. And above the tomb, we're going to write empty tomb. This is what you have to have faith in. You have to have faith that he came and died on the cross for you. And you have to have faith that the tomb is empty, that it's all paid for. And that is what makes our lives in Jesus so possible to be joyful and free and to make our relationship with God possible because there's no sin standing in the way. So our last, our last story is just like the blind man's number six. See how we phrased it. We say the blind man obeyed and went his way in perfect sight. And we're going to say we obey. And have life abundant and eternal. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He gave us life. We obeyed like the blind man, and now we go on our way with life. We can see the truth. It's kind of like the song we sing, standing on the promises of God. And it's like the story about the man who built on his house on sand. That wasn't very wise, was it? But if you build your house on rock, which is Jesus Christ, you will have life that is full of purpose, but you'll also have life for all eternity in heaven. 
now we're going to draw us again. And we're going to draw ourselves with Jesus. So I'm going to draw a picture of a girl sitting and listening and looking up to the Lord Jesus, who she loves so much. And Jesus is going to look a lot different when we're in heaven with him because he won't be humble and poor looking like when he walked the earth. He is the son of God and the king of heaven and it's going to look a lot more grand and glorious up there. But just because it helps this, this story go together and it also is something that I often picture in my mind because I love him so much, we're going to draw ourselves sitting on his feet. And I'm going to draw him sitting on a rock. to me. I just can hardly wait. I can hardly wait to see Jesus in person. There's so many things I want to know about heaven and I can just hardly wait to get there and see it. We know a lot of wonderful things but there's so many things that the Bible doesn't talk about and maybe that's because we don't need to know more. But we sure know that it's gonna be a beautiful place and filled with so much joy and love and light and happiness and that's why we want everyone to get there. We want everyone to know about it. That's my little picture of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now we have a couple pages left so I'm gonna encourage you just to do some coloring. And if this story made you think of any other images in your mind, you have a couple pages left in the book to write about it. I think it's something to think about how simple it is to be a child of God because it's just through faith. You don't have to do anything crazy. You just have to believe in the words of Jesus and how much he loves you. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you can enjoy your little book and use it to talk to people about him and show it off to your grandmas and grandpas and just explain how much Jesus loves you and how he came to save us all. I wanted to share with you the verses about the wise man who built his house upon the rock that reminded me of the song we just sang. So I'm reading in Matthew 7. And this is Jesus who's speaking. Every person who listens to my words and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. It rained and the river overflowed. The winds blew hard against that house, but the house did not fall because it was founded on a rock. However, Every person who listens to my words and does not obey them is like a foolish man. He built his house upon sand. The rain came down and the river overflowed. The winds blew hard against that house and it fell down. It was a terrible fall. So think about your house being the life that you're building right now. And I know you're young, so you have a lot ahead of you, right? And even I am young. I have a lot ahead of me, hopefully. And so we need to remember that the way we live our life right now matters. Are you going to build your house upon the rock, who is Jesus Christ, who told you that if you have faith in him and what he did on the cross, he will come into your life and make you the most wonderful person if you let him. You can't be good on your own, we know that. But Jesus is perfect and if you believe in him and you believe that he came and died on the cross for you and that he rose again and that he came to take away the sins of the world, including yours, 
He said once you believe in him, he's going to come and indwell you. You're going to be born again in the spirit. You become part of the family of God. And what that means is that instead of being on your own, trying to be good, Jesus is right inside you and he's going to be your strength. And the Bible talks about how we're supposed to treat people. What does love look like and grace and forgiveness and how God wants us to have strong and wonderful families, that there's something for a mother to do, a father and sons and daughters. God talks all about that. He tells us not to be lazy, but to work hard and to give all the glory to God and to do everything for the glory of God. He tells us that we are wonderfully and creatively made and that we have a special purpose in Jesus Christ to tell the rest of the world about the Savior that came for them too. So when you understand those things, you understand who you are and how important your life is. You're not just on the earth to eat and sleep and play. Even though those things are important, you have something so much more important to do and Jesus is with you to help you. And you can be a part of an eternal mission to help other souls find eternal life in Jesus Christ. And one day when we leave this earth, because that's coming, God is going to be so pleased that you helped other people come to him. He loves that because he wants the whole world to be saved. And so we're his helpers. I love to read about the stories of Jesus because they remind me of who Jesus is. He was the most kind and wonderful person. And he said, children, come unto me. And he would tell the men, don't tell the children to go away. I love them. I love them. They have more faith than some adults do. And he would heal the sick people and the blind people. And he just wanted everyone to experience a fulfilled and wonderful life. He loves us so much. He, God's our creator. He created us on purpose. So I just want you to remember how important your life is and what an important mission God has given you. And it's not to make you feel stressed or busy or frightened. It's supposed to make you feel excited because he gave you a great mission, but he's not leaving you on your own to do it. You just have to pray and say, Lord, I am ready to do anything with you. I am ready for the adventure. And you know what? You're going to have the most crazy and amazing life if you just walk in faith and you take everything that life gives you and you use it for the glory of God and to talk about Jesus. It is the most wonderful life you could ever imagine when you're close with Jesus and he loves you so much.